Welcome to Bearcat Update. I'm your host, Jenny James. We have a jam-packed show this week, but first we start things off with the Maryville boys basketball team. Before we get into the highlights, one family is a pillar in the Maryville basketball scene, the Steck Lines. Our reporter, Jake Wright, brings us more. Jake? Maryville High School is not just a football school. The men's basketball team has been a staple for postseason play under fourth-year head coach Matt Steckline. Great culture. You know, Maryville is a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to, to, to go to sporting events. We have such a good fan base. Um, so it's, it's, it's an awesome environment to, to coach in, to play in, and, and to be around. Um, I, I think, you know, we have our district seed meeting Saturday. Um, I think we'll be the number one seed in our district. Uh, we do have some tough teams in that district that we've already played, but uh, we have one, LeBlanc, I think could be very tough. Uh, we've already played him three times this year and had some close games with them. And to try to beat him a fourth time could be very, very difficult. Matt isn't just the coach of the Spoofhounds. He also coaches his son, Cree, who is a junior for Maryville and the starting point guard. Sometimes we clash a little bit with each other. You know, I think I'm right. He thinks he's right. I mean, he is right because he's the coach. But it's just that father-son relationship that, like, sometimes you go at each other, but, like, it still works out either way. I mean, yeah, it's nice having him there. Always I can go to him anytime, whether it's at home or at school. Just I can always ask him questions or anything that I need. Creed isn't the only Steckline suiting up for Maryville. Morgan Steckline, his sister, is a freshman for the Spoofhounds. So it's, and it's fun to be a, a parent for that because at the game I just have to watch. I don't have to worry about anything. I just go, get to go and enjoy. So that's a whole lot different than coaching uh, Creed. But uh, just to get to watch her and just have fun. She is new to basketball. She started playing like two or three years ago because she grew up being a gymnast. So she's, I remember the first time she touched a basketball and it was not the greatest. She's gotten a lot better and she's starting to enjoy the sport more and it's nice watching her like get some varsity time and starting to contribute in ways she never thought she would. The men's and women's basketball teams look to improve as they head into postseason play. For Bearcat Update, I'm Jake Wright. Thanks, Jake. Wednesday, the Maryville boys basketball team took on the Cameron Dragons and we were there to catch all the highlights. Early in the first, Tay Oglesby finishes a contested layup to ignite the spoof hound offense. Shortly after Oglesby, Eli Dowitz drives to the cup on a nifty hop step, scoring for the spoof hounds. Towards the end of the first half, Eli Dowitz euro steps around the defender for another crafty finish. We head into halftime with Maryville up 31 to 16. The spoof hound assist clinic continues with a smooth no look pass by Jalen Sundell to Tay Oglesby for the layup. Near the end of the game, Eli Dowis puts the cherry on top, throwing down a monster two-handed slam. Look out, Sports Center Top 10. Maryville cruises to a 65-38 victory over Cameron, putting them at 18-4 on the season. The Hounds were led by Eli Dowis with 14. Friday, the Hounds blew past Benton High School 44-31, and Dowis led all scores with 13 points. This week, the Spoof Hounds take on Mid Buchanan and Savannah to round out their regular season. The Hounds will begin district play as the one seed on February 20th. We are going to take a quick break, but stick around. We've got Northwest basketball to come. You're watching Bearcat Update on KNWT Channel 8. Welcome back to Bearcat Update, I'm Jenny James. Wednesday was like Christmas Day for college football. A good signing day can put your team in the right direction for years to come, but a bad signing day can sink a program. The Bearcat football team picked up recruits from Florida to California. We've brought in Northwest Missourian sports editor Isaiah Swan for a special spring football edition of Coach's Corner. Isaiah, what do you think overall of the recruiting class that Coach Wright got in this year? Oh, you know, Jenny, me and you and I were just talking about earlier how every signing day is happy for everyone. You know, you bring in new recruits, new faces. Um, but specifically, I like this class a lot. Uh, there's a lot of good talent, uh, of course, but I think what's really remarkable is you see uh, a pattern of good student athletes coming from big class six, class seven schools. Those are hard to get whenever you've got division one schools competing with you. I think Northwest is competing with those division one schools. And definitely one recruit that Coach Wright is really hyped about is a quarterback from Illinois. We're gonna take a look at what he has to say about this quarterback. Okay, now do a little research. Dad uh, played at the University of Minnesota, had a very successful career at the University of Minnesota. Dad also played for the Chicago Bears. 
He was a longtime football coach for the Chicago Rush when, when arena football was really legitimately arena football. And, um, you know, now coaches Division three ball out east someplace. Uh, good old friend Brian Schwartz called me on this kid a year ago. He didn't start as a senior, and I apologize. The guy that played in front of him his junior year escapes me, but he ended up being the 7A All-State uh, player at quarterback. He's big, guys. He's, he's 200 pounds, and he looks like a college football player. He doesn't look like a typical high school kid coming in. Um, he, you know, you start to listen to dad's pedigree and you understand that the kid's a football junkie. He eats, sleeps, and lives football. He's a leader. He's up every day. He goes to Don Beebe's House of Speed. Don Beebe, the old wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills, um, has a, a facility out there in the western suburbs that he goes to and, and trains at. Uh, you know, he, he wants to come here as soon as graduation is done. He doesn't want to wait till the fall. He doesn't want to wait till August. He would probably be here tomorrow if I, I'd let him get here. Uh, he's a winner, and, and I think he's going to be a darn good football player for us. I, I'm, he's a, that program is, is a great program, and, and it's just it's fun to watch just how that kid carries himself. He's, he's a college quarterback. Mike Honnessy. 258 yards per game he averaged his senior year. Isaiah, what are you, th what are you seeing from this kid? Oh, I'm excited about him, Jenny, primarily because he's a quarterback and he looked at the situation that Northwest football found themselves in last year where they kind of really didn't find a consistent guy at the helm. And that's so important is having a leader um, and a voice on your team at that position. It's the most criticized position in football for a reason. And I think this guy's ready. Uh, you watch his highlights. Um, his short to medium throws are what really get me excited. Um, on his huddle, a majority of his throws are taped whenever three to four guys are rushing him. So you do the math, eight to 11 guys are um, in coverage. And you also look at his offensive line, and it, it, that's not that stable either. And so you, you look at the mathematics, and everything is against him statistically. But for him, he makes it look easy. He completes those short passes in between narrow windows that only few can get in. Um, you look at how Northwest has treated quarterbacks over the last decade. Um, quarterbacks have been known for rushing the ball and throwing the ball, dual threat type quarterbacks. And you look at guys like Brady Bowles and Kyle Zimmerman. This is the, one of those guys that can hit the home run ball when he has to, but really good at the same time at completing those short, narrow throws that Northwest is really looking for. It's definitely very exciting. And now we're going to take a look at another very talented recruit that we got, LaTroy Harper. You want to see a bio sheet, guys? Take a look at this. This is his football <laughs> accolades right here. Here you go. These are his football accolades. Okay, if you want to turn to page two, here's his basketball accolades. Okay, kind of gives you an idea of what this kid has been able to do at Penny High School. Uh, it's, uh, you know, what a neat family. Um, unselfish kid, kid that played for Coach Obert, you know, former Bearcat. Um, had a chance to to break Doriel Green Beckham's high school records, all of them, going into his senior year and, and play quarterback because that's where he needed to play for them to be successful. This kid's an amazing athlete. I, you know, I went and watched him play basketball against Hogan Prep. It was kind of seemed like one on five at times, but you know, he still, you know, scored a lot of points. He's he's tough. He's got he's got great um, He's got great hands, great ball skills. You saw that catch he made his junior year in the state championship that was on all the highlight reels. Um, he, can, he could play a lot of things on both sides of the ball on our football team, and that's probably the highest compliment I could, I could pay to a kid. I think he's got a ton of upside. You know, he's finally going to specialize playing college ball. You know, all of a sudden he's not the three-sport athlete anymore. He's going to focus on football, and, and I'm excited about what this kid can do. This kid is amazing. I mean, I, I remember watching the video of the OBJ catch. Isaiah, talk about talk about LaTroy. Uh, LaTroy Harper is probably a fan favorite for everyone that has been following signing day, Jenny. A uh, guy who's known for his famous catches, but also, you know, an all-around athlete. And that's what Northwest really likes to get as athletes. Um, you know, we could see this guy play a range of different positions. Could play wide receiver, could play, you know, a little bit of slot. I'll use him kind of like a Jordan Grove type guy where you line him up at running back too. But uh, this guy's exciting. Wright even said he could possibly even be playing his freshman year, which we both know is rare to do. But as we've seen in the past, Wright is willing to pull red shirts as he did last year. And so this, this is an, ex an exciting guy from a class one school. I'm interested to see how he translates to the big stage at D2. 
when we were kind of talking earlier, um, Latoria was a multi, you know, multi-sport athlete. Um, how important is that when you are going into college athletics? Oh, it's it's so important, and I think it's not important to anyone but the coaches. The coaches want to see that they're doing more than just one sport, that they're continuously training. But you look at the sports like basketball and wrestling, like that just teaches them different skill sets, and that teaches them a variety of different. Um, just different weapons that they can use in their arsenal when they come to Northwest because they like to specialize here at Northwest and uh, this is it's it's nice to get that extra gain of knowledge from other sports. It's definitely going to be really exciting to see um, what he can do here. Another name that we are familiar with is Isaac Volstead. We had Jacob a few years ago and what a stud he was so um, hopefully we can see some exciting things from Isaac, Isaiah. Oh yeah Jenny. Um, I remember last year during the, or two years ago in the playoffs, um, a Harding coach called it the Triangle of Death is what the Northwest defense was nicknamed because of two defensive ends that went on to go to NFL scouting camps, but also Jacob Volstead right in the middle heading off that Triangle of Death. And his brother Isaac, um, no exception, he's broken apparently every high school lifting record that Jacob had. Um, this guy, once again, you talk about multiple sports. He's won a soccer state championship. He's been in four state football titles, and he's won two. This guy's incredible, and out of spite, you know, he kicked a 45-yard field goal uh, just because he can. This guy's really talented. I'm one of the more exciting names. You see the name. You see Volstead. You expect big things. I think Northwest is going to get big things. I know. I'm, I'm definitely excited to see what these kids can do, and I know Coach Wright is Everybody's really excited. Isaiah, thank you for joining us today at Coach's Corner, and we're going to be back here on Channel 8, Bear Time Update. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. I'm Jenny James. Last week, the Northwest Missouri women's basketball team was in action. Northwest picked up two straight wins a week ago. Coming into last week, they sat one game out of the MIAA tournament. Coach Buck Scheel talks about what the team needs to do to continue in the right direction. For us, we just got to go out and we got to compete. Um, we've got to find it within ourselves to embrace that uh, that part of it and you know sometimes we have it sometimes we don't and you know at, at this point in the season if we're trying to get out of the girls that drive that competitiveness then you know it's going to be a pretty rough stretch here the rest of this month. Thursday the team fell to Emporia State 76 to 62. Saturday the ladies traveled to Topeka Kansas to take on the Washburn Ichabods. Washburn 16 and 8 on the year trying to move up the MIAA standings. We jump into the second half. Tanya Meyer avoids a double team. Out to Kylie Coleman, three points. Bearcats, Coleman with the team high, 16 points. Later, Macy Williams to Meyer. Meyer gathers, she goes up strong and one. Meyer finished with 11. Washburn's offense was too much for the Bearcats. Taylor Blue squares up and knocks down the 15-footer. Washburn blows past the Bearcats in this one, 54 to 84. Kylie Coleman led the Bearcats with 16 points, shooting 46% from the field and picking up one steal. Senior Tanya Meyer had 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 blocks. The Northwest men's team was also in action this week. They picked up a win against Emporia State on Wednesday, pushing their record to 20-2 overall and 12-2 in the MIAA. Saturday, the men were also in Washburn, fighting for the top seed in the MIAA. Big story out of Topeka Saturday. Justin Pitts did not start. He's battling a turf toe injury. Washburn comes out hot. Tyus Martin to Cameron Wiggins. Wiggins nails the three. Later, Pitts to Brett Doherty. The big man pounding in the paint. Doherty with some fancy footwork and off the glass. Doherty played a big role in this game. Doherty again here, backing down another defender. This time he finishes with the right hand and he ended the game with 19 points. Joey Wittes trying to get him on the scoring action. Pitts goes right, back to Wittes, pick and pop, works to perfection. Bearcats go into the half, up 24 to 13. Wittes again this time, showing off his handles. He takes it to the rack, beautiful spin. Wittes finished the game with a high 22 points. Late in the second half, Bearcats trying to put the Ichabods away. What is to Chris and Dow? Ice in that man's veins. And Dow seals the game. Northwest goes on to win this one, 58 to 50. 
Joey Wittes with a breakout performance, putting up 22 points, shooting 53% from the field. Brett Doherty helped out, putting up 19 points and pulling down six rebounds. At one point, Wittes and Doherty combined for 39 of the Bearcats' 44 points. A great game for these two guys. After the game, coach Ben McCollum and Joey Wittes talked about the differences playing with a limited Justin Pitts. Well, it's, it becomes considerably more difficult to score. And Justin's a good defender, but when you get that length, you're able to switch a few more things. Uh, you rebound a little bit better. Uh, you get more hands on balls. Some shots that you may feel like are open are open, but then there's a hand that's about three inches taller, and it's just a little bit more difficult of a shot. And so you'll see percentages naturally drop because of that, um, and that's what you saw tonight. It's never the same without him out there, it's, and especially in a big game and stuff, it's totally different. But um, like I said, we obviously made some mistakes, and you know, with him being out, mistakes are going to come. But we just kept fighting and focused in really on defense and then made big plays on offense at the end. We are going to take one last break, but stick around. We have more to come. You're watching Bearcat Update on KNWT Channel 8. Back to Bearcat Update, I'm Jenny James. The Northwest softball team started up their season this week, and our reporter Maria Babcock caught up with the team before they traveled down to Arkansas to talk about how they are preparing for their season. On Wednesday, February 7th, the Northwest Missouri State softball team headed to Arkansas to open their season. The team was picked third in the 2018 MIAA preseason coaches poll right behind Central Oklahoma and Missouri Western. Four-year starter and team leader Rebecca Maher tells us more. We were excited. I mean, that was our highest uh, preseason rankings we've had since I've been here the last four years. So it was nice to feel appreciated throughout our conference. And while those rankings don't really matter, come the first couple weekends here and to see what everyone's really got, it's nice to feel that last year we left an impression on some of these teams and could really come forth. And I mean, we got a first place uh, vote, which was really nice because another team out there felt that we were good enough to make it to the top and we're right up there with Missouri Western and even Central Oklahoma who was ranked first and I think will be a really good competition and that just shows that they think we will be too. So The team hopes to stay positive throughout the season along with winning as many games as possible and making it as far as they can in the postseason. Uh, my personal goals for this season is just to stay healthy and keep the team momentum up. That seems to be a thing this year that we're really good at and I just want to keep pushing that forward here through season. Uh, as a team goal, of course, it's always make it to postseason and really hope to make a long run there and keep everyone just positive and excited to play the next games because that's what happens a lot is uh, people just lose motivation halfway through the season. So I, I'm really hoping to keep up a lot of like smiles, happiness, and we do a really good job of that in practice. So we're excited to see how that uh, portrays on the field here. In Arkansas, the team will see an MIAA conference team along with several schools they may run across in the postseason. This trip is important to see what each player can do to help the team. Yeah, this Arkansas weekend is good to get out there and uh, make sure we see what people's talents are because it's tough when you're cooped up inside and we want to see what people do when it's game time and it's an exciting weekend to get all the jitters out but also to like see how we mesh together as a team and really see our cohesiveness throughout the year so it's fun. In Arkansas the team will be playing Arkansas Tech, Central Missouri, Harding University and Arkansas at Monticello. After this trip, they will head back to Arkansas on the 16th for six more games. The team hopes for an exciting season, building a solid record. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Maria Babcock. Thanks, Maria. The softball team played four games on Thursday and Friday. Thursday, the team dropped their season opener against Arkansas Tech 6-11. The bats heated up in the second game against Central Missouri. Northwest won 11-6. Friday, the team lost their first game 0-1 and won their second 11-2. The Northwest baseball team was also in action last week. They played four more games in Arkansas. Monday, they dropped a game against Arkansas Fort Smith 11-3. Wednesday, they traveled to Batesville, Arkansas to take on Lyon College. They lost that one 4-16. Thursday, the team traveled to Arkadelphia. They picked up their first one of the season over Wachita Baptist 2-1. And on Saturday, they lost another to Henderson State 2-5. This week, the Northwest indoor track and field team traveled to South Dakota State. One runner is putting his heart into what he does. Our reporter, Juwan Bush, shows us more. 
Dallas Dearney has been running track and field since high school, but his love for track was really put to the test his sophomore year of college. When the doctors found out that Dallas has a heart problem that may stop him from running track and field forever. Well, uh, symptoms started about sophomore year of high school, but we didn't get it diagnosed until sophomore year here, so it was four years after we figured out that was actually a problem until they actually figured out what it was. But Dallas couldn't stay away from track and field for long. Somehow, some way, he found a way to get back in track and field. It's just one of those things I know if I stop, I'm going to regret it and I'll miss it. So I might as well get the most of it that I can now. I love competing. I've always been a competitive person. And track just kind of scratches that itch. Honestly, it's just the love of competition. Like, there's no more pure form of competition in any other sport out there because it's just you and against everybody else. So Dallas uses his heart problem to motivate him on and off the track as Dallas is striving to be a cardiologist to help others with conditions like his own. Yeah, that's actually what intrigued me in becoming like a cardiologist, just because like I had the pre-existing condition, so it made me interested. So it's like the cardiologist says that my case is like different or special, they say, because they don't exactly know what's going on because of how like difficult it is. So yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to like get some more insight and go into the field, that way maybe I could figure out a little bit more, maybe not, I guess we'll find out. Even if the doctor said Dallas could not compete no more, Dallas said he would find a way to somehow be a part of the team just for his love of track and field. For Bearcat Update, I'm Juwan Bush. Thanks, Juwan. A couple standouts from this weekend. Jordan Hammond finished first overall in the 400 meter dash with a time of 55.62 seconds. Mercedes Isaacson Cover finished second in the triple jump with the second longest jump in school history. That's all the time we have today, but first, my top three things to look for. The Bearcat men and women basketball teams take on Pitt State Thursday in Bearcat Arena and will face Missouri Southern at home also Saturday. The Bearcat track team will be in Lincoln, Nebraska Friday, and the Bearcat baseball team will be playing at Cameron University in Lawton, Oklahoma this weekend. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Bearcat Update. You can follow us on Twitter at BearcatUpdate underscore 8 or watch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KNWT8. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Okay, take two. Are you ready? Okay. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Bearcat Update. You can catch last week's episode right here or all our previous episodes down here.